of the rites of passage of contemporary American white male artists is air to. How difficult is this passage for a contemporary black artist to get? You said, I mean, you don't have to answer specifically each question, but they right. all go together. Have things gotten better since the days of the Harlem Renaissance in the 1960s? If not, when? Well, um, when we think of American art, we should be thinking of the diversity of the art in this country, because this is supposedly the most diverse country in the world. But that is not the way it is. Pick up the textbooks, American art means basically white, male, European art. Uh, until recently, and more specifically in the last century, with the work of James Porter, Alan Law and people who were destined to change history, there was little or no notation of contributions that African Americans had made. And so they started building on a certain kind of scholarship which emphasized uh, that black artists in particular had made major contributions. In many cases, they were the workforce behind the making of the art skills that took place. And so with their writings, there was an interest uh, that was developed from other sources. Mm -hmm. Their students, I became a student of James Porter. And he mentored me. He called me aside one day and said, you know, it's great that you have this interest in art, the talent to paint. He said, but you've got to do other things. He said, you can't just paint. You've got to help to find the field. And so I kind of took that as a mandate to not follow, a burden. Yes, to follow in his footsteps. Not a burden, but something that really needed to be done. And so uh, he encouraged me. And I had also the encouragement of my parents, which, and this was an era when most, not, maybe not most, but a lot of parents, uh, black parents, wanted their kids to be doctors, mm -hmm. lawyers, dentists, what have you. They wanted to move them into another class. But when I would go home, uh, back to the mountains, uh, my parents were just so proud of the fact that I was in college. They said, just be something, be somebody. <laughs> and I knew from the age of, of um, seven that I wanted to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. And so I combined that with my uh, creative skills and so forth. So now to, to continue that question, we were simply overlooked. We weren't a part of the equation. And the Hall Renaissance gave us a lift, but it was short-lived. And now we look back upon it with pride because it's centered basically in New York City, in Harlem. But its emphasis then, in the 1960s, was reborn and it went all over the country. And so people became aware of the fact that, oh yes, we have had a glorious past. So in the 1960s, 1970s, it's almost like a revival, another renaissance, a rebirth with that kind of creativity. And so we were kind of like on our way. It's been very difficult. It hasn't been easy. And it is still difficult. Now, we've made progress, but we're not at the promised land. We're still struggling.